Hey, and welcome again. Today, let's learn the differences between the map, apply, and apply map functions of the Pandas library. So before I show you the differences on the Jupyter Notebook, I actually want to show it to you in a more visualized way. So we have apply map and apply map, and they are all um, applied to different types of objects. So either a data frame or a series object, a series object being a column. But what determines what we can do with them is basically when you pass this data frame or series object to a function that you either defined or already exists, uh, what is passed to this function? What is being sent to the function? What is being applied? Uh, so if you choose to do, if you choose to apply the apply function uh, to a whole data frame, you either pass one column at a time or you pass one row at a time. If you choose to do the apply or use the apply function on a column of a data frame, then you are passing one element at a time, but in only one column. You can also choose to apply a map function to your series object or a certain column in your data frame. If you do that, again, the function that you're passing will be applied to each element of the column that you specified. But map function is not really used for that specifically because you know you can do the same thing with the apply function. We will talk about the details in the Jupyter Notebook more. And lastly, apply map you can only apply this or use this function on whole data frames and it basically applies the function that you specified to the whole data frame but element wise so it does not pass one column at a time or one row at a time it passes each element one by one to the function that you specified so now that we learned this let's go ahead in the Jupyter notebook and see how it's actually applied in python all right, let's get started. So I've already imported pandas. I've imported my data set. This data set is a data set I found from the New York City Open Data. Uh, I will leave a link to it below this video so you can go and download it yourself too. There will also be a link, by the way, to this whole notebook so you can go download it yourself and play around with it yourself. Uh, this data set is a data set of open positions in the government. Uh, we have a job ID, title of the position, which agency has opened this uh, opening, posting type, etc. It was a much bigger data set, but I've got a subset of it, subset of it just to show you um, some things with apply functions. So let's start with the apply function itself. Um, the apply function, as I said, you can either apply a function to the whole data set or a subset of the data set, as in a series object, so one column. So if I want to, let's say the civil service title, uh, it's all capital, right? Let's say I want to put it all to lowercase and only capitalize the first letter. Let's say we had a change of formatting. So in that case, I will pass a capitalized function uh, to this series object. And I would, of course, need to define this capitalized function. So for that, because I am passing um, or applying the or using the apply function on the whole series a series object it's going to pass one title at a time to me so it's going to pass this one and then this one and then this one so for that I can just say one title is passed to me and I'm going to return title lower capitalize and then you know that's going to be my whole function just showing you something simple and then if I apply this yeah that's what I get. I get a new series object where uh, for all of the titles, everything is lowercase except the first letter. So apply map, on the other hand, is a bit more different. The apply map can only be applied to the whole data frame. And what happens is it passes each element in the data frame one by one to this function. So let's try that too. I will say apply map and um, I don't know. Let's also define a new function. I'll say add year. Um, let's say for some, oops, for some unknown reason, we want to add the year that we're currently in under, after all of these, um, elements that we have in the data set. So let's say add year is going to accept a text, but some of my elements in the data set, of course, are not strings. So for example, this one is an integer. So I will first need to turn them into string. And let's say I want to add something like 2022. And there you have it. Now it applied this very simple function to each element in this data set and added underscore 2022 to them. 
Um, this, of course, is very different than what we do with the apply function. Yet, you know, there could be something that you want to do to the whole data set and you want to have a quick way of doing it instead of iterating through the whole thing. Because if you try to do this with the apply function, as I said, if you pass the whole data frame, to the apply function, it is going to pass it one column at a time. So this function then would have to find a way to deal with one column or one row at a time. Uh, and that's a little bit harder. So that's why if you want to do something to the whole, uh, all of the elements in a data set, apply map would be the way to go. So map is a little bit more different and I will first want to show it to you on a simpler example. So let's say I create a series object like this. The first one is cat, the second element is dog, not a number and rabbit. So basically the third one is, uh, or the second row is a missing row. So the strength of map comes from being able to find occurrences of a certain string or an element and then change it immediately. So for example, if I want to change all occurrences of cat to kitten and dog to puppy, we can really easily do it without any functions or anything. I would just have to pass a dictionary and I would say cat is from now on going to be kitten and dog is going to be puppy. And here, as you can see, we had an occurrence of a cat and now it's kitten. We had an occurrence of a dog and now it's puppy. The strength of map is that if you want to change something really quickly, then you can just pass a dictionary uh, to the map function and then it will immediately be done. Otherwise, if you try to do it with the apply function, you would have to create a whole function where you check each element to see if it uh, equals to cat or not and then change it to kitten or if it equals a dog or not and then change it to puppy. Um, you can also use map uh, using functions, of course. So in my example, we have agency, right? The agency is here. And let's say I want to, what should I do? Change, okay, change a word that I see. So, whoops. Say change word. Then I can do something a bit more sophisticated, right? I can say title, replace using a string function here. Uh, what do we have in the agency? Okay, so uh, mention of department. Let's say I want to change the mention of DEPT to kitten. That is what I want to do. So this is what I can do and then if I apply it on the agency column, then yeah, okay, now we have kitten of med mental health or health mental hygiene. Um, so that is one way of using it. So as I said, you can either pass a dictionary uh, to your map function or a whole function, but you can do the exact same thing using apply. So there is not really much of a point of using map here. Instead, the actual point of using map would be to change things. Uh, one thing that you should realize, of course, is that if there is no match, uh, map actually turns things into not a number or a missing value. So that is a caveat that you need to keep an eye out for when you wanna use map. One nice use case that I can think of to use map, for example, is to add something to a whole column. So let's say uh, we again want to use department uh, or the agency information. So here agency tells us which agency opened this position, right? So let's say for some reason we want to add, make this in a sentence and not only uh, a piece of information. So what I, what I can do is to say map all of the values in agency uh, to say this position is offered by And then by doing this, in these brackets, we're going to have whatever the value is for agency. So if I run this, you will see that for that column now, we're go it's going to say this position is offered by the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. This position is offered by NYC Open uh, Employees Retirement, whatever. So that way, if you want to apply something to one column and one column only, because as you remember, if you do apply map, it's going to be applied to all of the elements in a data frame. So if you want to apply it to one column only, and if you do not want to create a whole um, 
function to do this, just want to change the values with something, you can use something like this and then you would be adding, um, you would be making the same change in all of the values in one column. Uh, one last thing that I want to share with you is something that applies to all of these functions, map, apply, map, and apply. Uh, when you're passing a function to them, let's say you're passing a function and the function uh, cannot handle not a number or missing values or non-values, then you can say na action ignore. This way, if there is a not a number value like this one here, and uh, your function might break if there is a non value passed to it, then by saying ignore, you're saying don't even pass me the not a number values, non values, because my function might break, or you know, some other reason, maybe you can do it for efficiency reasons too. But this way, uh, missing values will not be passed to the function that you're specifying here. As I said, this is true for apply, and this is also true for apply map. So that's one thing that is good to know. So I hope this video made it clear for you when to use apply, when to use apply map, and when to use the map functions and how they are different from each other. They're actually quite different from each other and in which cases to use them uh, would really vary based on your use case, of course. Uh, if you want to learn more about the pandas functions and when to use which and kind of have a little cheat sheet with you when you're coding, download my free pandas cheat sheet. I will leave the link for you in the description below. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.